What on earth are you doing now, Daddy? I'm going to be making this retro style lamp. This is a piece of oak branch. It's deadfall. It's quite soft and wet and rotten. And I'm drilling out the centre of it with a forstner bit. It's a 30 millimetre forstner bit and I'm drilling from each end so that I form, it forms a tube. I then put this in the airing cupboard for several weeks to dry out. There we are, you can see it's a tube. Here's um, a sapili blank, spindle blank. Uh, it's made out of gluing several bits of scrap sapili together. And uh, I'm just using an easy wood, easy wood tools, easy rougher here to bring it not quite to round. I just want the diameter to match a tube I'm going to use for the mould. Checking the diameter. And uh, with these easy wood carbide tools, you uh, keep the tool level for this for spindle work on wood and uh, you have the cutting edge at centre height. Just using my skew here to neaten up the end grain and uh, creating a tenon on the other end so it'll fit in the chuck jaws. Just using the skew there to create a dovetail and just removing a little bit more wood that I don't need You could use a spindle roughing gouge for this, but I'm rather enjoying using this uh, easy wood rougher, the easy rougher. This is the pro one with the long handle. Now I'm putting the easy chuck on. And these are the step jaws. And I'm using the middle step, tightening it up. This uh, piece of sapili, this, this blank is gonna form the top of my lamp. Just neatening the end up with a, a skew. Removing the sort of nub in the middle. And uh, just using a 30 millimeter force and a bit to create um, a mortise for the dowel to go into. Test fitting the tube that I'm using as my mold. Just removing a bit more waste wood. Test fit in the uh, Sapili dowel, 30mm Sapili dowel. Test fitting it through the now dry piece of uh, dead wood, which I did have to drill out a little bit because of shrinkage. Another piece of uh, Sapili made from uh, glued together bits, and this is going to form the base. Much the same process, just bringing it almost to round. And uh, just going to uh, square up the ends, neaten up the ends. It's very uh, dry, this wood, and dusty. And I'm creating a tenon again on this end. Just checking my diameters. Using a skew as a scraper just to uh, create a dovetail. Removing a bit more waste wood so it'll fit in the step jaws. Right, on goes the uh, easy chuck with the step jaws again, middle jaw or middle step, should I say, tightening it up, just using the tail stock to keep it pressed in, and then using the tails that stock quill to drill out the centre with a 30mm force and a bit, and I'm drilling right through this time. Measuring the LED light, this is the angel eyes ring light, and marking out the diameters. So I'm going to cut a recess the size of the light. And I'm using my Robert Sorby parting tool for this. Making sure I uh, create clearance for the tool so it doesn't bind. Turning it round, you can see the disc where the force and a bit cut right through. Turning it round and I'm creating the same recess the other way. They don't meet, otherwise it'd fall to pieces. But I'm joining them together by drilling through on my uh, drill press. 
I'm just joining up the recesses. You can see the holes there. I'm uh, test fitting it all together now. It's upside down as it is at the moment because that's how I'm going to fill it. And I was very pleased with how it all went together. And now on goes the tube which will hold the resin. I shortened this tube down because I didn't want all that excess tube on it. And I'm using a hot glue gun here to seal up the tube. So we don't get any leaks and it also fixes it in place. And this is MBFG Clear Top 35 Epoxy Resin. It's a slow cure um, resin and it's ideal for this sort of thing. It, it doesn't have a massive exothermic reaction like some of the quicker cure resins. You've got to measure it out very carefully, 100 to 45 ratio by weight. And I'm mixing it thoroughly. I let the resin cool down a bit too much here. I had pre-warmed it, but I spent too long messing about in the garage and it had cooled down a bit. Ideally, it should be a bit warmer when you mix it. Traps rather a lot of air otherwise. And it looks slightly milky. I'm degassing it here in the vacuum chamber. You can see it all rising up. It would have degassed a lot easier in actual fact, a lot more effectively if uh, if I'd warmed the resin a bit more as well. So that's my top tip, make sure the resin is really warm. You can see it going down as I equalise the pressure. And now I'm starting to pour. I was a bit concerned at this stage because of the uh, milky appearance of the resin but this was partly the temperature and partly the fact there was an awful lot of trapped air in it. I needn't have worried though. And uh, just pouring resin inside the uh, oak branch because there are quite a few voids and splits and cracks. It's full of air, it's light as a feather because it was so rotten. And what I'm trying to do here is get the resin to run inside and fill up as many of those voids as I can. Just pushing it down and then topping up the resin. I had to mix a bit more, I think, if I remember rightly. And then pushing the base on. And uh, nearly had a bit of a calamity here. It suddenly squirted out as the uh, base seated down, using all the uh, overspill, just varnishing the top of my. Uh, cabinet and <laughs> topping up here by pouring it down through those holes. Now it's into my pressure pot. This is a big 20 litre pressure pot so it's good for these tall projects. On goes the lid which you have to uh, bolt down in sequence and make sure you really bolt it down very very firmly. and then it's into my heated chamber. I show this in an earlier video but this keeps it all warm and makes sure that you get a good um, a good set. You don't want resin to cure, this, particularly this resin you do not want it to cure in a cold environment and in fact this I'd heated up to over 30 degrees C. 48 hours later out comes the uh, pressure pot I'm just uh, releasing the pressure and uh, out they come. I'd actually cast another one of those skulls at the same time just to make use of the uh, pressure pot. And there it is. Needed to top it up a little bit so I had to go back in the pressure pot for another 48 hours. And here I am on the lathe again. The blank is on the lathe between step centres. I'm using my easy rougher again which is great for resin and stuff because um, being carbide it doesn't blunt uh, the same, you know, I'd be constantly sharpening um, steel because this resin is quite hard. Just cutting it all back. I cut the plastic sleeve off with it off the lathe in fact. I just used, I put it on the lathe to start with to cut the glue away and then I broke the sleeve off off the lathe and then remounted it back on the lathe to do the turning. You know when you're doing alright and you get these big ribbons coming off and I was covered in them, absolutely covered in them. 
the camera got rather covered in them too so I did lose a bit of footage there we go I've trued up the ends and I'm putting it back into um, the easy chuck and I'm putting the top in first so that I can deepen the channel in the bottom so it joins up you can join it up now with the resin so it's a through channel to the resin I was test fitting the light and now I'm drilling out the base so I want space for wiring or a battery or whatever so I'm putting the force and a bit back in I'm drilling a fairly deep hole test fitting the easy jaws these are the uh, easy reach jaws and that just slots on there beautifully. It was they were absolutely perfect size for this job. Using my spindle roughing gouge just to do a bit of bulk removal. And the spindle gouge, Sorby spindle gouge here. Just so I can get go right up to the chuck jaws. Square nose scraper used as a negative rake. You know, I'm holding the handle up high. And this is really good just for getting rid of any chip out and for um, smoothing curves back with my spindle gouge here just finalizing the shape lovely sharp spindle gouge I'm just going for that lava lamp look I'm getting ready to part off here I lost the actual footage of me parting it off somehow it wasn't very spectacular Back with my square nose scraper, just uh, making sure it's all good, and then start the sanding. I'm using starting on 120 grit with my inertia sander, so Simon Hope Pro sander. I sanded right up to um, 600, and then I'm putting two coats of cellulose sanding sealer on there. Yorkshire grit time. This was lovely using this. It all came. It's, you started to see uh, see what it was going to look like. I'm working the Yorkshire grip, and it gets finer and finer. And uh, then I'm onto burnishing cream just to give it an extra polish. I'm working the burnishing cream now. But even this, although it looks pretty good. It's still not glass like yet. Just finishing the end there and putting a bit of wax on as well. This is microcrystalline wax. Buffing that. To bring it up like glass, I used the buffing wheel on my lathe with some Vonax and it came up absolutely superbly. Not a scratch in sight. Fantastic. Well, back from Makers Central. Still buzzing from that. That was um, an amazing, amazing event. And I've got to thank uh, my friend Nick Zametti and his fantastic team for putting it all together. It was just incredible. I uh, met so many cool people. Um, it was just a really good time. But I thought I'd better come back with uh, something a bit spectacular as a project. And here it is. Not a lava lamp, it's a lichen lamp. And uh, it's made out of sapili with a lump of oak deadfall in set in resin in the middle. And it's come out amazingly well. I've got the resin like glass. It's absolutely crystal clear and no scratches or anything. So I was really pleased with that. And really, really pleased. But yeah, I sort of shaped it like the old fashioned uh, lava lamps. And uh, I've got a recess in the bottom there to put the lighting. One of these. This is an LED ring. Uh, it's a, a ring of tiny little LED, high power LEDs. And they're sold on eBay if, as angel eyes uh, for car headlights. And they come in all different diameters. You can get them right up to 120 millimeter diameter. I think these are 70, these ones. Unbelievably cheap as well. I think they're about three pound each. These were three pound fifty each. You buy them as a pair, about seven pound. And uh, they come like this. And this particular one works between nine and twelve volts. So you could wire it up with one of these little snap stud collect connectors and a little nine volt battery, and have it completely self-contained. but it's much brighter with 12 volts. I've got an old 
12 volt power adapter from a long broken portable DVD player. It's got a UK plug on it, but obviously these um, 12 volt adapters come in uh, all different plugs and things and they're cheap as chips on eBay. Luckily I had this old one left. So that's got 12 volt DC output. So I can wire it up directly to one of these bulbs. And that will actually slot right in the base of my um, lichen lamp and will shine up through the resi. Well, there we go, look how bright that is. And by wiring it up to a mains electricity transformer, I don't have to worry about replacing bulbs. There we are. That's it illuminated. Well, it's really good. Really, really pleased with that. I am delighted with how that's come out. Really pleased. Uh, it just looks really good when it's lit up as well as when it's not. And it creates this strange um, optical illusion that the uh, the branch in the middle is filling up the entire width of the acrylic because of the magnification effect. But it's, it's actually quite narrow. Um, you know, there's quite a gap of um, acrylic, uh, not acrylic, epoxy around it. And the epoxy I used was um, Clear Top 35 from MBFG in Belfast and really pleased with that. Uh, the pressure pot really did the business at getting rid of all those bubbles. It's crystal clear, absolutely crystal clear. I got one bubble in the base. Uh, where I hadn't really filled it enough. I did have to top it up uh, So I had to go back in the pressure pot for a couple of days, but even then I hadn't quite topped it up enough When you put resin under pressure uh, It will always shrink a bit because all the bubbles are being compressed and they can take up quite a volume um, proportion wise The other thing with this is there are a lot of voids under the bark of that wood um, the branch in the middle and the resin got forced into that so that also caused the resin to drop. But I can see why Heath and Nick, you know, Heath Knuckles and Nick Zametti are addicted to using resin because that is just great, really good effect. Really pleased with that. A um, few notes on um, cutting back the resin. Uh, you'll notice from the video, I used a mixture of tools. But um, one of the main tools I used was um, uh, an Easy Woods tool, and it's the uh, the Pro Rougher. So it's got a very big handle on it, and the almost square tip. And that was absolutely brilliant um, for doing the resin. The only thing that you have to do is you have to angle angle it down so lift the handle. Uh, otherwise you'll get chipping out um, doesn't always happen um, but you can get chipping out and a word on chipping out if you feel it starting to chip out if you feel chips coming off at all stop what you're doing right now because the the chips can get quite deep and spoil the effect and you can end up having to cut the resin back quite a long way to get rid of the chips so if you notice it's chipping stop what you're doing do something different but by angling this down and forming a negative rake, you should avoid that. And the other tool I used, one of my favorite tools, uh, is my Robert Sorby heavy, extra heavy duty uh, square nose scraper. And uh, I also used a negative rake on that and that gave a really nice finish and the, the extra width on that is very good for smoothing out curves. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did please like, share and subscribe. It really helps me if you share this. It costs nothing to subscribe and thank you very much to all my subscribers. Had quite a few new ones lately and that's really good to see. Uh, I am now on Facebook and uh, there is, I've got two Facebook pages. I've got sort of a personal page, but I've also got a business page, which I've 
a link to my YouTube channel. So there will be a link there. So go across and um, like it and follow it. That would be really good. I'd really appreciate that. And I shall be back soon with a really interesting milliput project, something um, different. Uh, and you'll see why it's different when I do it. Um, but all you milliput lovers should be um, should be delighted with it. But that'll be my next project if all goes to plan. So thanks for watching. Back soon. Here's a couple of clips of the uh, lamp when it's not illuminated, just out in the garden. And you can see how clear it is, and you can see the lichen really clearly. I was delighted with how the resin turned out. Here it is lit up on my bookshelf. I've now wired it up properly with the uh, mains adapter. A few different views. But thanks ever so much for watching. And I'll be back soon with some more videos. More rubbish coming soon.